Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Google Flan. OK, so let's get started. What is Flan? Well, Flan is an instruction tuned model. Um, in the past few years, people have uh, uh, been moving from fine tuned, pre trained, kind of fine, uh, pre -trained, fine tuned kind of strategy to prompting based models and now to instruction tuning based models. So in fine tuned, pre -trained, uh, uh, in pre trained, fine tuned strategy, which has been used to train models like BERT and T5, you have a pre trained language model and then you fine tune on a particular specific task A. Right. So typically that requires many, many task specific examples. And what you get is a specialist model which specializes for one task. Right? In prompting based models like GPT-3, the idea is to pre-train a language model and then do inferences on as many tasks as you like. Right? So the idea here is to build a generalist model and the idea is to improve performance via a few short prompting, uh, uh, you know, using prompt engineering at runtime, at inference time. And then uh, the idea behind instruction tuning kind of models is to pre-train a la large language model and then instruction tune it on multiple tasks. Let's say, you know, BCD, uh, which basically also gives you a generalist model um, which can handle natural language instructions. And then you can actually infer on task A. Right? So on unseen task A. Right? So the hypothesis behind this uh, flan uh, training is uh, instruction based training is essentially by using supervision to teach a large language model to perform tasks described via natural language instructions. The language model will learn to follow the instructions at inference time and will do so nicely even on unseen tasks. So flan is a fine tuned language network as it says. Uh, it's a decoder only model which has been fine tuned over 130, you know, uh, instruction fine tuned over 137 billion Lambda PT, the pre trained model. Uh, it has been fine tuned, it has been instruction tuned on 60 different NLP tasks. Um, these 60 different NLP tasks are grouped into several clusters based on their task types. And then the idea is to actually hold out uh, uh, each cluster for evaluation. Uh, while instruction fine tuning flan on all other clusters. So that is how the zero shot evaluation of flan has been done. So the idea, the broad idea is also depicted here. So you can basically take several tasks like common sense reasoning in, uh, you know, translation tasks, sentiment analyst tasks and so on. And then you can find instruction tune using these kinds of tasks. But then when it comes to, um, you know, unseen uh, inference, unseen uh, evaluation, well, you do that zero shot unseen evaluation on new tasks, for example, NLI task here. Each task is specified using uh, natural language instructions. So you would basically see things like here is a goal and then there'll be options and then the model is expected to select uh, an, an answer which is closely matching to the target. Right? Uh, well, what is observed? So here are the results, broad summary of the results. So if you look at three different task buckets here, natural language inference, reading comprehension, closed book question answering, you observe that the flan model, the zero shot flan model is actually way better compared to GPT-3 zero shot model as well as compared to the GPT-3 few shot model, even though uh, the flan model 137 billion is smaller than the 175 billion GPT-3 model. Uh, in other words, you know, zero shot flan is better than zero shot Lambda pre-trained model. Zero shot flan is also better than 175 billion GPT-3 model, zero shot as well as few shot uh, GPT-3 model on several data sets. Zero shot flan is also better than zero shot glam model, which we discussed in one of the previous videos. Uh, not just what are the tasks and templates used to train flan? Well, the flan model has been trained using 62 different text data sets, uh, which are divided into 12 different task clusters, as you see here. The blue ones are the natural language understanding tasks, while the teal ones are the are the NLG tasks. Maximum number of training examples per data set was set to 30,000. Now, um, 10 unique templates were manually uh, curated per data set that use natural language instructions to describe the task for that particular data set. For each data set, uh, you know, of course, typical uh, these 10 unique templates were typical ones, but then there were also up to three different templates that turned the task around. For example, for sentiment classification, we include templates asking to generate a movie review uh, rather than the standard sentiment classification task where given a movie review, you are supposed to answer whether it is a positive or negative sentiment. Uh, for each example, uh, the template was randomly chosen while training the flan model. 
Uh, now for uh, the evaluation part, so as to support zero shot evaluation, consider the data set D, uh, they consider the data set D as unseen at evaluation time. If no data sets from any task, uh, from, from any task clusters that D belongs to, were also seen during instruction tuning. Um, the output space for a given task can be either a classification kind of thing, several classes in terms of classification tasks, or free text in terms of generation task. In terms of generation, uh, no specific change has to be made uh, because these models are decoder only, so they are meant for generation, but for classification tasks, they actually uh, pre uh, you know, uh, uh, put up these options as part of uh, um, the input itself, so as to so so that the model can choose one of the available set of options which were supplied as part of input. The instruction tuning actually is not very expensive. It just took about sixty hours on a TPU V3 uh, with one twenty eight cores. So as you see, uh, there are multiple instruction templates that could be uh, that that could be formed for the same task. Uh, some of them are shown here. As I mentioned, you know they basically created up to ten different uh, uh, unique templates per data set. These are the templates shown for the NLI task, the natural language inference task, where the original input is just premise and hypothesis, but then uh, the templates can be, um, uh, uh, you know, the templates can describe uh, the natural language inference task using different forms of instructions. Okay. So, how does zero shot flan compare with few shot GPT 3? Uh, well, um, here is the comparison in terms of, of um, you know, different task clusters like natural language inference, reading comprehension, close to question answering and translation. Comparison is actually done using, uh, uh, you know, uh, with respect to the original pre-trained Lambda PT model with the GPT-3 model, with the GLAM model and then SuperOS model. SuperOS model could be either T5 BERT or translation models depending on the particular task. So what is observed is that uh, the zero shot flan is actually very effective for tasks which are naturally verbalized as instructions like natural language inference, question answering, translation, structure, text, and so on. It is less effective on tasks which are directly formulated as language modeling tasks where instructions would be sort of redundant. For example, common sense reasoning and co-reference resolution uh, tasks where uh, you know that are formatted as finishing an incomplete sentence or paragraph, more like language modeling tasks. Now, um, you know, um, so in some ways, why does the FLAN outperform GPT-3 kind of models? Well, because FLAN has been instruction fine-tuned and uh, the way these uh, prompts differ across FLAN versus GPT-3, uh, you know, you can see it here. So if you see, uh, let's say, if you compare uh, FLAN prompt with GPT-3 prompt or T5 prompt for the natural language inference task, you observe that the GPT that the T5 prompt, for example, just puts up the task name here and then just gives you, you know, uh, here is the premise and here is the hypothesis. So CB is the task name, commitment bank, right? And then hypothesis and the premise. And uh, then the model is supposed to just uh, predict whether it is uh, entailment or contradiction or neither. On the other hand, GPT-3 prompt also puts out the task in a way as it was expected to appear on the web or in data sets, right? So it doesn't really uh, put it out in an instruction format, in a natural language instruction format, like a human would uh, take the task as, while FLAN essentially codes it up as a human instruction. So here is the premise, here is the hypothesis, does the premise entail the hypothesis or not? And that is the reason why FLAN sort of outperforms uh, these models on, on various tasks and various data sets. What factors are important for zero shot instruction tuning? Uh, well, uh, the, the authors actually studied several factors and found that these three factors are very important for zero shot instruction tuning. Number of fine tuning data sets while, uh, while doing this tuning, model scale and natural language instructions. So here is a pictorial view of how adding more and more clusters, task clusters for instruction tuning increases uh, the accuracy or the performance on held out uh, task clusters. So here, um, summarization, translation, reading comprehension, sentiment analysis, data to text, co-reference resolution, and conversational QA were essentially used for training, while the common sense reasoning, natural language inference, and closed book question answering were used for evaluation. And what is observed is that as you add more and more task clusters with more and more data sets in them, you observe uh, that the performance actually improves, right? except for one of these clusters, sentiment analysis cluster, where the performance is uh, flaky in that sense. What is also observed is that, well, the performance continues to improve, which also means that if you add more task clusters, you can actually expect performance to become even better. Right? 
Now, uh, with respect to uh, you know model sizes, they experimented with uh, uh, increasing the model sizes. And what is observed is that on small model size range, actually instruction fine tuning hurts. It re really reduces the performance uh, with respect to an untuned model. While in uh, the larger range, so uh, you know models which are greater than eight billion size in range, you observe uh, that uh, instruction fine tuning sort of leads to improved, uh, you know, much better improvements as the model size improves compared to the untuned model. Lastly, they also experimented with uh, different kinds of natural language instruction. So, uh, of course, the uh, flan fine tuning, for example, for translation would look like this: Please translate this sentence to French. The dog runs. Right. But if they also compared with a no template setup uh, where the idea is only inputs and outputs were provided. So for example, for translation, you would give input as dog runs and expect the output to be that. Right? Then there's also uh, another third setup, data set name setup, where the input is prepended with the name of the task and the data set. So for example, for translation to French, it could be translation WMT14 to French, and then you provide the input, the dog runs. Okay. Now here is a comparison of what happens across these setups. So if you fine tuned without instruction, but did evaluation with instructions, you know you get some poor performance, right? And this is performance averaged across four different task clusters. So, uh, and then if you just give data set name while fine tuning, but give instruction at uh, evaluation, or give data set name at fine tuning, give data set name at evaluation, you know, you get some performance, but you get the best performance when you give instructions at fine tuned time, and also you give instructions at evaluation time. Okay, which is basically what FLAN follows. Okay, so what is the impact of few shot examples and prompt tuning on instruction tuning? So does instruction tuning get get you know benefited if you basically give more examples at inference time? Few shot examples or uh, how about prompt tuning using say soft prompt tuning methods? Right. So the observations are as follows. Uh, so you know you observe broadly that yes, uh, doing a few short flan is better than doing zero short fan flan across different task clusters. Okay. Uh, examplers, you know, when you supply them as part of few short uh, few short uh, prompt tuning, a uh, few short instruction uh, tuning, you know, you observe uh, that they are more effective for tasks with large or complex output spaces such as stuck to text um, or translation uh, or close to question answering. Uh, maybe because uh, examplers help the model better understand the output format in those cases. Okay. Also, what is observed is that uh, uh, when you're doing few short, uh, few short flan, the standard deviation among these templates is sort of lower uh, compared to uh, the zero short flan, uh, which indicates reduced sensitivity to prompt engineering. Uh, these uh, standard deviations that you see here are plotted across different data sets that belong to the same task. Now. Um, when compared with the untuned model and uh, when compared on the axis of prompt tuning, uh, you know, um, here in this particular case, the authors actually performed soft, soft prompts uh, and uh, tuning using soft prompts, which basically means you prepend. Uh, you know, and in this particular case, they experimented with the super glue data set. So therefore, they train continuous prompts, these continuous prompts which can be prepended for each of the super glue tasks. And what is observed is that FLAN is better than Lambda PT model, the Lambda pretrained model. Uh, so they actually uh, did uh, uh, this um, continuous prompts based uh, training uh, or tuning in two parts. So one in a full training set setting and also in a low resource setting with just 32 training examples. And they observed in both the exam in both the cases, uh, the FLAN instruction tuned model is better compared to an untuned. Here are some flan output examples. So, you know, uh, here are examples where you can actually do a typical sentiment analysis. So you can actually give uh, a movie review and then actually ask for positive or negative sentiment, right? Uh, you can also ask uh, more appropriately, uh, you know, whether the you, know, you can you can reverse the uh, sentiment analysis task and you can actually ask questions like did critic dislike the movie and still the flan model does not get confused and answers it accurately. Uh, you can ask uh, um, you know, questions like what is Barack Obama's profession or answer in Chinese. So you can also ask the model to answer things in uh, other languages. You can use the model for recommendations, recommending fun activities to do uh, in different places. You can ask the FLAN model to uh, do interesting things like changing things to past tense or passive voice. So uh, style transfer in some ways, change the, uh, you know, you can also do more fine-brained style transfer, like change the verb to eat. 
Um, so John is reading the paper, John is eating the paper. Uh, you could actually do uh, more interesting things like change the verb to eat and also subject to Noam Chomsky. So sort of understands what is the verb part and the, the subject part of the input sentence and so on. You can also uh, use the flank model to generate utterances, more like more useful in a chatbot kind of a setting or suggest uh, terms which are related. So good for related search or you know use it for uh, writing stories um, or converting facts to stories, right? Facts to stories. OK, so that's about the Flan model. Uh, let me summarize the video. So Flan is instruction tuned model, which is instruction tuned on the 137 billion Lambda based model using uh, 60 plus NLP data sets. Uh, zero shot flan is better than zero shot lambda pre-trained model. Zero shot flan is also better than zero shot 175 billion GPT-3 model on 20 out of 25 data sets which were used for evaluation. Zero shot flan is also better than few shot GPT-3 on some of these data sets. Zero shot flan is better than zero shot glam as well as one shot glam on several data sets. What is also observed is that performance of this instruction tuning sort of improves with the number of uh, instruction tuning task clusters, the size of the model, and uh, you know, uh, and also, um, you know, what is also observed is that instruction tuning can be combined with other prompting methods like prompt tuning and few shot prompting to get even better results. Okay, hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.